the foundations to Sitting Spiritually started in 2003 when um, I'd been working very hard on this garden and somebody suggested that maybe we want to think about getting somebody from the National Garden Scheme to come and have a look at it. Uh, and they came out and they said it's a lovely garden but it's only a third of an acre and our criteria is we need to keep people interested for 45 minutes and you haven't got enough seating. I thought, well, I'd always hankered after a swing seat. I always liked the idea. And when I saw what was available in the garden centres, was not entirely to my taste. At the time, I was working with a chap called Nick Shannon. And I said, can I get together with you and do something? And we made this first seat together, and it still sits in the garden today. The NGS gave us the seal of approval and the open day came and about four or five people looked at this swing seat. I finished up doing about four or five quotations and they turned into orders. Uh, and six weeks later, I'd given up my job. The story behind the brand came because I'm, I'm interested in meditation and have been for many years but at this time of the year you get a chance to do it outside so I was actually sitting on that seat um, and a friend of mine came into the garden unbeknown to me and when I opened my eyes and focused he said are you sitting spiritually then I'll begin and I thought that was a fantastic name Scott McCarthy became my first maker and it became quite obvious to me although I was still making them myself that these guys did as good, if not better, job as, as, as I did. And so I started to look for more because the demand was then increasing. James Amato originally used to work for the Brooks Brothers. He was designated as the guy that used to order the Chocosan frames from them. He then set up on his own uh, and obviously had the skill set and the knowledge of, of those particular frames and he's become one of our regular makers. He still makes the Chocosans today. He will also take orders for the, the rest of the range. Nick Shannon, who was the guy I mentioned earlier on, who was the very first guy that helped to make him. His son, Greg, was coming into the business and I knew that if his dad was keeping an eye on him, he'd be good. Uh, so he became one of the next recruits. Alex De Bono, who was opposite to, um, uh, to, to James, um, they started to work on them together and then he became an independent maker in his own right at Shibourne, Lancaster. She's grown to know the business inside out. She's actually, the makers probably have more to do with her than I do, and she just pulls everything together. After Shibourne joined us, the business grew, and I used to make all the rope swings myself, and as the, as the orders for those increased, I looked round for somebody to do it. And as luck would have it, Neil, who is married to Shibor, is an engineer by trade. He was the perfect guy to start making these. As well as the makers, I think what I'm so proud of is the family involvement with the business. So Celia is my co-director and also my wife, and also the cushion maker. And she is an absolute rock for us when we go to Chelsea. And Lucy, my daughter, who is a professional artist and has had a lot of strong influences on some of these designs. We try to bring out something new every year and launch it at Chelsea. It's the only show we do. It's, it's everything points towards Chelsea. Twice in the last four years, we've managed to get nominated for Chelsea Product of the Year which was uh, the floating bench last year and in 2014 the heart back which we brought out to celebrate our 10th anniversary so chelsea for 2017 was our 10th anniversary the whole star of this show i suppose this year was the swinging daybed <laughs>